I said in the last video that in the next video, big this one, that we talk about the X gantry and extruder. I lied. Oops. Hello everyone, Adam here from CRT. And today we're looking at some of the Y axis components on my upcoming printer. The XY stepper mounts, the Y axis shaft mounts, and the XY kinematics, the belt driven kinematics. Starting with a quick overview of the components, we have a small clamp at the end of each Y axis shaft, and on the other end, we have the XY stepper mounts and another small clamp for each one. The belts are guided around the frame by the small idler mounts, so that's all there is to it. Let's have a more detailed look at those parts and how I arrived at this solution. So I started with this. Sorry that it's black and almost impossible to see, but there's two M5 holes here, well, two holes for M5 screws, the shaft holds in the middle, and there's a little hole here for a M3 screw and nut to fix the other side. Now, the problems with this that I found is that this M3 hole is very close to this edge and is quite difficult to hold both sides while you're trying to tighten it. So the next thing I did was this. Well, it looks basically the same, but you might be able to just about see a small lip here. See, this one was basically round. So basically now, as I put the nut in this space, it can't turn because of that edge, which means I only need one tool to tighten everything. The problem with both of these parts is that tightening the clamp using the M3 screw and nut reduces the distance between these two points. So this is the next step. Here I must give some credit to Tech2C on their YouTube channel. I'll leave a link down below. I first started to see his design about halfway through doing my own. So on this part, you'll notice that this clamp is quite similar to other clamps that I've used throughout the design and similar to what Tech2C uses on their core XY joiner. So this clamp shape here is what holds the shaft. The bolts go through here, two M3s, to tighten as a clamp. The hinge is this point across here, so it doesn't reduce the distance between these two holes. And that's about that. The thing I don't like about this design is the use of two screws. Because of the rigidity of the plastic, as you tighten one, the other one tends to come loose. So I moved to a single screw, but then I realized that this is far too deep for a single screw and it's also far too deep for just clamping a bit of shaft. So this is the final design. Next we'll look at the combined stepper motor and shaft clamp mounts, sort of in one part. This is the first design. It's a bit big and I don't really like it, but this is the first design anyway, so I'm going to show you. This part mounts using this screw here and this screw here, an M5, as well as an M5 in this slotted hole. The slotted hole is way too big because it's never going to need that much movement, but that's what I did. Um, the downside of this is in order to mount it, you need one shaft here and another one. The downside of this design, well, one of the downsides of this design is that a second shaft is needed across this point here to mount into this hole. Because it's printed this way up, because this is basically the because this is the way I printed it, I don't like this one. It looks horrible, but you can see this. So you can see the same clamp that I've used. It's way too big. It uses loads of extra plastic. I don't like this bit mounting here. Even once I've mounted it, it seemed a bit flimsy. Because this is the second design that I did. So on the inside here, you can see two M5 holes. This little wall here is to stop the motor movement because obviously it fills that block of the space and that just stops any translational movement sliding along this face as the stepper is pulled in that direction. This little alleyway is just to make sure, well this one's to clear the shaft and this one's to hold the shaft with this little clamp that goes on the top. I didn't want the same all the way along because there's a chance that the alleyway will position the determinant of the <laughs> The small alleyway will determine the position of the shaft rather than what I want to position the shaft with which is this bracket and the shaft bracket at the other end. Looking around this side, we can see this bracket here. That's just what mounts to the back here. Turning further round, we can see these two holes here. These are square nuts, which hold the bracket on. Three holes in the top. But to be honest, I don't really like these. There's not really enough space here for this square nut. So I'm gonna take these holes out and change the size of these uh, circular holes in the top to be 2.9 mil. And then the screws can go through this part and self tap into the plastic. The screw clamp doesn't have to be really tight, so that should be plenty strong enough for this. So looking at the opposite side, 
we can see it's remarkably similar. There's a little nut here and that allows this clamp to fix on the top. As you can see, this bracket is higher above this surface than the other side. That's because the two belts are at different heights, so the stepper motors, stepper motors must be at different heights relative to the shaft. So on here, the shaft looks higher. Again, holes, three holes, nut here, and the two nuts on the back hold this down. Again, same as the other one, don't like those nut positions, so I'm going to have those holes as self-tapping holes. This Y-axis area, because of its proximity and mounting to the frame with quite large components, was one of the toughest parts to make sure all the re all the components stay within the fray. For example, that stepper motor could have quite easily mounted with the belts directly under the shaft or outside the shaft, which would have helped the space within the frame to get a bigger build volume, but then would have com compromised, com 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 compromised, but then would have compromised my ability to keep everything within the frame, which is one of the requirements. Let's have a look at the XY idlers. So this first version, as you can see, is basically just a block with some space for two idler gears. It was very early on, I just wanted something to give me a rough idea of size and position. And so the first thing I did was this. So again, M5 screws to mount it to the frame, directly through here and here. Idler gears fit in here and here. Very simple. M3 screw down through the top and a space for a nut at the bottom. As an ongoing theme in my designs, you'll see this nut holds quite a lot. It means you don't need a wrench or anything to hold the nut while you're tightening it because you can just add any shape anywhere pretty much. You can just put them in wherever you like and it makes the assembly so much quicker. The frame still takes two hours but the rest of it is quite quick. Now didn't really have too many problems with this just that when the idlers are in here and you're trying to put a belt through it ends up going through but just hitting the back face and you have to sort of wiggle it and sort of turn it and jab it and sort of prise it through from this side and it was a pain to get through. I don't know why I put those as square holes in the first place, probably because squareness was on the mind because the whole thing is a square block. What I decided to do is basically round and round in the whole thing. I made it more rounder. -er. And so the final one looks like this. Lovely, eh? It's basically the same thing, but rounder. There's a nice round bit in here. So when I put the belt in, it just sort of curves around the face and comes out the other side. Again, holes basically the same, just a nice strengthening part through here. Nice and rigid, I mean, I can crush it with my fingers, it does bend slightly, but it's nice and strong. Nice and nice and strong. And that's the XY idler, simple. Lastly, the rails. I mean, you can use steel or aluminium. There's loads of different variations of each. The actual shaft that you do use on the Y axis is not as important as the X axis. Since the Y axis shafts are mounted directly to the frame, you don't need to worry about their movement and mass, so just get them in place, use steel, job done. That's what I've sort of done. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be using the Core XY kinematics. Now, Core XY is a bit different to most other kinematic styles. In a normal kinematic style, you have an X-axis stepper motor, which will drive X-axis movement. You'll have a Y-axis stepper motor that drives the Y-axis movement. But with Core XY, you have two steppers that sort of do this movement. So there you have it. That's all there is to my current design for my upcoming 3D printer for the Y-axis, XY steppers, and belt-driven kinematics. Yep, I think that's about everything for now. Excellent. If you want to watch another video, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. Like the video if you liked it. Thank you very much for watching. This has been CRT.